Thanks for joining this week. This week on Hit and Chip, we have a special guest, Steve Beach, who races here with us at Lucas Oil Speedway and has made a bigger circle than that up north. Uh, we're going to talk to him later about some of his uh, events and stuff he's been through. So, uh, what else you got, Josh? Uh, Steve drives the number 10 street stock at Lucas Oil Speedway. He's a, a member of the another member of the Blue and White Brigade. That's right, Blue and White. <laughs> Uh, in 2015, he was the XX Speedway point champion in the street stock division and finished six in points at Lucas. So uh, uh, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk to Steve, and we're also going to talk a little bit later in the show about uh, being competitive on a budget. Steve's a budget racer and does well with it, so stay tuned, and we'll be back. All right, we're back. Um, Steve, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for coming down. How, how long is it from... Uh your shop camping. Thirty minutes at the moment. So it's about an hour to the track. Yep, yep, about an hour. All right. Well, tell us a little bit about how you got started racing. Um, you know, what what year was it, and uh, what kind of what kind of vehicle, what led to you getting behind the wheel of one of these hot rods? Uh, my first uh, go round at racetrack was when I was about ten years old. They really? Had, yeah. They had a dirt track in Tipton, a little eight mile dirt track, and we had a hundred KT. S Yamaha with Marg A chassis, and uh, that's where I met all my open wheel buddies, Lanny Carpenter, Randy Martin, all the Comas brothers, that's where I met a bunch of those guys, they were all racing back then, and raced that for about, uh, until about 12, 13 years old, and junior high started in sports and all that stuff, so we kind of took a pretty big break till uh, I was almost 30 years old when I got started. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, so a little yeah. bit later in life, so originally it was carts. Yeah, Basically. started out dirt, yeah, dirt, dirt car, car track, yeah. What was uh, what was the first full size rig? Um, my dad, he uh, he helped build cars way back in the day, Capital Speedway and Marshall and that kind of stuff. And uh, he had some parts on a guy's car. And the first time I sat in a race car seat was 1986 at the old Lake Ozark Speedway in Lynn Creek. Okay. And we made uh, one race. Dad was, uh, my boy's driving that car or uh, parts were coming off of it. So <laughs> I got a wheel it that night and JC and, you know, that whole bunch mm -hmm. was down there. And that's how I kind of got to, you know, seeing JC run a lot. And, and uh, that was, uh, that was it until I got my own stuff. So, so I built my own stuff. I've heard you talk about your dad before and I've seen some of the videos where he, uh, he's a musical yeah. Well, what is it he plays there? Is it a ukulele? Mandolin. A mandolin? No, mandolin. He can flat get it on a mandolin, yeah. And yeah. Uh, his name's one. Ralph, Ralph, Ralph Beach. Beach. Yeah. And yeah. I don't guess I knew he was uh, he was a racer. Yeah, uh, he uh, he got started, you know, late 60s, early 70s, but uh, three kids, you know, mm -hmm. that yeah. kind of thing. So he, he helped more Life than he happens. raced, but he raced a lot at, uh, at Capital, actually, back... Uh, his open wheel car kind of looked like a sprint car, but it was B modified back then. Not not like the B mods we have now. It was uh, basically an open wheel sprint car, in and out box, short wheelbase, but uh, carbureted. Oh yeah. Yeah, carbureted cars. You know, Bill Ooch and that whole bunch that ran alcohol injected sprint cars. Well, the B mod was, I guess, the the lower lower class of the but super modified might. back then. So he raced that for a couple years and helped build some cars for some guys. So he he's the one that. Got me started in it, so Dad, you can blame yourself on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I guess, I guess my first recollection of Steve Beach was probably 2002, 2001, mm -hmm. when we were racing at the old Wheatland Raceway, mm -hmm. and we were running the Super Stock class. Yep. You know, we were all pretty stock body looking, uh -huh. yep. body looking stuff, and this blue and white. 10 car, you know, <laughs> yeah. flat sided 10 car came and whipped our ass one yeah. night. And uh, I guess that was my introduction. Uh, what were you doing about that time? Um, I know you were still running up, up north, you're on Capitol. Yeah, we ran uh, actually up when I first got started racing my own car, it was at I 44 on asphalt, like in 96, 97. I was living in Springfield at the time. And the closest track for me and the easiest to get to was. I-44. What class was that? It was the Sportsman, the Stock Clip. Mm -hmm. Laymon Stock. Yeah, Laymon Stock. Yeah. Uh, actually, Tim was running then, Brown, and uh, old, the old Racing Redman. Uh -huh. uh, Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels, Daniels, yeah, that whole bunch. And, yeah. you know, we ran half a season, I think in 96, 97, the tail end of it. And then we raced the first half of the next season, and I'm like, this ain't for me, you know. Uh -huh. Them guys were putting on new tires every week, and 
set up with murder on the asphalt. You it's know, a you, hair splitter deal. Right? Yeah, I mean, if you're tight, you're screwed. If you're loose, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. Dirt track, you can make up for it driving it. You yeah. know, there were 25 laps of just riding around. So, yeah. traded that car for a wing sprint car. Really? Went from asphalt to wing sprint. From the just like that. Yeah. Frying yeah. pan to the fire. Where did you run it at primarily? Uh, we ran uh, the Sprint Car California, double X. They had that kind of limited, not limited so much, but you had that steel headed motor back then. And, you know, still a 600 horse sprint car, but we did that for two years and just not in the budget. You know? Right. So traded that car for that 10 car you were talking about. Okay. Went from a sprint so car went to, from old, a sprint to, a, to a super stock or sportsman. Super stock, yeah, yeah. And that's how we got back into the full fender stuff. What was it like jumping from, I mean, cause I, I've never driven a sprint car and neither has Kenny, uh, but. We've hardly like, been around one. Yeah. They don't have springs on them at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> they course, bars. Right. Yeah. They ain't right. They ain't right. right. That don't work at all. No, and you don't drive it in on the right rear either. So yeah, what, what was that like, uh, you know? From that to a car. Yeah. Well, the, the course we went from asphalt straight to, right to, to a sprint. Yeah. It's a Holy stupid cow. dirt car, you know, so. Uh, the motor I had in that, uh, Asphalt car was a 360. We had to have that 360 uh -huh. cube against yeah. low compression, kind of. Mm -hmm. Well, alcohol likes compression on injection, so we stuck our, an injection on that 360 motor, and that's what we stuck in it for a car. Yeah. And uh, I remember the first uh, time I hot lapped it, well, getting bumped off was the first thing, no starters. So mm -hmm. you start it in gear, and boy, she lights, and your head hits you the seat, uh -huh. you take oh. off. Yeah. Well, I throwed it in the corner, like, you know, backing it in there, and the left side comes off the ground, and I just get back in the gas, and my dad was scared to death. He said, boy, you're going to flip that thing. And we finally, about two or three nights worth, we got a handle yeah. on it. Yeah. But we well, did that's such a major it. swing from one oh, yeah. uh, clock yeah. to that next. Yeah, them guys are driving their sprint cars. Are... My first ones, I remembered a really good-looking sprint car at Eldon. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it at Eldon? It yeah. had the really yeah. good-looking blue and white. I, that's, yeah. that's what I remember. And, of course, you, had, you later had the uh, Crate Lake model that you ran there for yeah. a couple of years. Yeah, that was my favorite. Favorite class car? Yeah. yeah. Well, budget-wise. You know, I, I really... Car. We really like the late models. The yeah. biggest thing that I see the issue with the late model is, is the tire budget that it requires, mm -hmm. and the, the tracks don't get along well enough for you to be able to travel at all. Yeah. You know, and it ain't it crazy that you're sitting there talking about driving a sprint car, and I have never even sat in one or probably touched one. Yeah. You know, from double X South, they're just this isn't sprint car country. It's you know? not, and, and it's it crazy. For Lucas doing yeah. what they do with them to promote that part of it. Yeah, they're just not in, you know, they're not, not in the southern part th of the 30 state. 30 minutes away, and you're talking a whole different crowd of people. All mm -hmm. the people you name, I've never heard of, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. You know, and you went to, you say you've been to Moberly and a lot of them other tracks, you right. know. Right. And it's crazy that that, or at least our classes are somewhat similar. Right. You know, our rules in these cars. So yep. I'm really wanting to try some of them out. Is other than Double X, I know you've had a lot of success at, at, at Double X. What other was your favorite track? I'd say Callaway. They're on Friday night. They're in, in Fulton. is a very... You know, okay, mom and Paul one deal, you know, I mean, it's, like you said, you're talking about the one you raced last two weekends ago mm -hmm. down the gravel road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same deal. You've got to go down a little bit of gravel to get yeah. to it, but, you know, it's it's no Lucas as far as facility, but what she's a racy, yeah. racy track. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. We can't get too spoiled. Yeah, because they're, you know, they, they run what they call, uh, I guess it's a sportsman class, kind of like what we, but it's, you can run a three link there. Gotcha. But. You know, Teddy Wellsmeyer, uh -huh. some other guys that run there. I mean, T Teddy won the points down there. Yeah, it's kind of so, reminiscent of our old super stocks. Yeah, yeah. Back, but back you know, the metric there. cars that we're running now are competitive with those guys. With so, yeah. I mean, they they pull some good cars because mm -hmm. the rules are kind of open. Right. You can kind of yeah. Well, and bring nobody's it from afraid other. to run a stock metric now against the three wheel right. car necessarily. Right. Yeah, because right. right. with the spring and shock revolution, that's not as big a deal exactly. as it once was. Yeah. Now you kind of done a, a little bit of mod racing too. Mm -hmm. uh, when did that? When did that start? And <coughs> tell us a little about that. Well, the first year that uh, Howard Shock opened Lake Ozark Speedway, uh, that was in '04. Well, I helped him do a lot of the uh, moving from Holt Summit, brought a lot of that stuff back. You know, trailered it back to the where the Lake Ozark track is now, and. Uh, I was still doing sewer water, mm -hmm. excavating back then, so he hired me to put all the sewer line in. So the trade-off was Eric Schrock, his boy, which is a pretty good sprint car wheel, we had a spare sprint car. So he put me in that for the first year okay. of 04. Because he asked me, he said, what are you going to run? I go, well, it depends on what classes you've got. And he goes, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He said, well, I'm going to put you in this sprint car. 
<laughs> you know, brand new 360 Gertie, yeah. Maxim, Maxim race car. I'm like, I believe I'll do yeah. it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. <laughs> so anyway, we ran it that in 04, and then the next year, I'm like, I can't. Even with the sponsor the help. Yeah, I mean, tires, shocks, fuel, just, and then you dump it a couple times, top mm -hmm. wing, nose wing, front axle. You know, there's yeah. 1500 bucks, so yeah. we went to the mod in 05 and raced the uh, A mod there, and then the next year the crate started, so we just ran the A mod, I guess, in 05, and then last year in 2011 we stuck that uh, crate motor that I had in that shell car. So, of all the classes you've raced, which class gets you the farther on your dollar? I'll tell you what, if they, if they ever brought the crate uh, late model deal back, and they kept the rules intact, mm -hmm. I'd be back in one of them in a heartbeat. Yeah. The biggest struggle I saw with that, everything almost happened so quick. You had a whole bunch mm -hmm. of people with the, all of a sudden that have a budget mm -hmm. to all of a sudden, you know, come up with a, a roller mm -hmm. late and put a crate in yeah. it who maybe didn't have the kind of wheel time experience that you necessarily need yeah. to be able to get one of those right. around the track without running into each other. Mm -hmm. Not cussing anybody, but yeah. that's just the way it was. But yeah, because yeah. I mean, a late model is definitely, whether it's a 400 horse crate or an 800 horse, 900 horse or open motor, it's not a beginner car. No. Right. You know, they, and, they move uh, a lot. And they yeah. put it on <laughs> somewhat <laughs> of a beginner budget. Yeah. 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 And that was, that was the big yeah, issue. Yeah, because, you know, if, if the rules would be, you know, reg you know regulated Same a little bit, it would be a deal, but you know the cheating started pretty quick on the crate. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Do we need to take a break, or are we ready so we'll to take a break? Let's take a little break, and uh, we'll be right back. And we're back. Thanks, you guys, for tuning in. Uh, again, we're back with Steve Beach here. Uh, Steve's raced many, many different classes and many, many different tracks. Uh, tell us, you got any beginner ideas on budget racing and what a budget should be, what class, and where you should spend your money? Uh, first, I think the first place is just to make sure you got a place to work on it. Correct. You know, I mean, if you're going to try to do this out of the backyard or under shade tree. Them days are about gone. Those days yeah, are gone. Happen, you I know, mean, and the non, the things that you can't, that you don't count. You got to have a truck. Yeah. got to have a trailer. Yeah. You know, that kind of needs to be in your portfolio before you even start. Yeah, because I mean, I, I talk to guys all the time, you know, wanting to get a race car and they're driving a little Honda Civic mm -hmm. and they live at home and I'm like, it's not going to happen. You know, you need to. Have pick up. Yep. I think that'd be the first thing if, if you're gonna go racing. <laughs> you gotta you know, get there. Get, you gotta get there first, so yeah. and have a place to work on it. You know. And you know, maybe for some of our viewers that aren't from this area, you know, Steve is a prime example of somebody who does a lot with a little compared mm -hmm. to some other racers out there. Yeah. Um, you know, he always has a great track presence. Um, you know, always has sponsors and help and stuff like that. And, and finishes good. And but, that's taken several years to build that up. You know, it right. wasn't like this is Steve's first year right. either. So this year, this year you put together a new car mm -hmm. and brought it out. Mm -hmm. um, kind of take us from, you know, initially, you know, how'd you end up with a chassis? Um, you know, obviously you have to spend your money wisely, mm -hmm. you know, especially when building a new car if yeah. you're on a budget. So yeah, like Kenny talked about earlier, um, you know, we'll just kind of start at the chassis and maybe talk about some other components and, and things that you can save on and areas that you don't want to save on, you know, uh, bang versus buck. Tell us about the new chassis you have this year. All right, well, that, that started last fall. The car that I had last year was pretty worked pretty good. I mean, we had a, had a big buck 50, the thing worked really well. Yeah. Well, after you put, well, a new put, put on yeah. it. you put a stub under it and I put some yeah. bars on it. We had yeah. a little rough left, I think, the last race of the year. and. Kind of the whole deal to get into that big buck 50 was if you could get the clip put, put under it, we could make it. That's right. Know. I had forgot about that. You had actually all but given up on yeah. that thing. And I get a phone call yeah. one day that says, what are you doing? What yeah. are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Here's the deal. If you can, if you yeah. can make some stuff happen, I can make some yeah. stuff I happen. I got the clip under it and I took it to your shop and you put the snout bars and the bumpers and everything on it. And I got it back in there. Yeah, it right. actually turned out, actually <laughs> was the best. The car drove all season. <laughs> but anyway... I kind of, I don't know, I had an itch to go late model racing. So I bought a turnkey late model. Oh, yeah. In uh, <laughs> February. And I had short attention. Uh huh. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, I'd, I'd love the late models, you know. I mean, these things are awesome, but man, I just got to, you know, kind mm -hmm. of a lean towards the late models. Well, I got it home, wouldn't hardly fit in the trailer. That's the first drawback. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I ain't getting a new trailer, you know. <laughs> so I get it home and uh, I'm like, shocks. Tires, 
thing will happen, you know. Well, so I pulled the motor and everything. I thought, I'm going to have to build a car. So I pulled the fuel <laughs> cell, pedals, motor, everything I could use off that car, maybe on something else. I kept it and I sold that roller. And uh, so I got me a good motor for a pretty good price. So there, I'm, I'm way ahead there. I've got my power plant, you know, just right. kind of freshen it up. So. Bought it, bought a used vehicle, bought it right. Bought it right. Again. And now you're getting resourceful about yeah. it. Yeah, and I'll tell you the together. truth, I gave $6,000 for a turnkey late model. Right. Yeah. With a crease and motor in it. Gotcha. Yeah, well you so get, what's the creasing cost? Yeah. You know what I mean? So you anyway. The tools free. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we put it, pulled it out, and I, so then uh, Landon, Clinton, started building those new cars. Right. Rip well, and race cars? Yeah, the rip and race cars, and they're doing pretty good with them. And Dave kind of, Hendricks got in on that ballistic edition type thing, so right. we had a deal going. And then I got to adding that up. I'm like, shoot, by the time I pay for the chassis, mm -hmm. I can't put it together. Right. You know, rear end, spring, shock. Not that you don't want them, just a can. Yeah, yeah. so just I, a was, can. I was okay. at a, a rock and a hard place there. So I'd, I'd bought and sold a few cars over the winter and had a little red S10 that was paid for. So she went on the auction block. <laughs> you know, still had, you know, my truck to pull my trailer with and a few other things around the shop, but that was my kind of ace in the hole. Mm -hmm. That was the one that was my going to finance this race car. Right. So I bought a... Uh, car that Todd Osborne up around Nevada, mm -hmm. that area. Him and Todd Mark. runs with uh, Alan yeah, Ferguson. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, he put this car on one of those Facebook uh, classifieds, mm -hmm. and I've seen it on there. They started it two years ago, and really good sandblasted, you know, straight metric chassis mm -hmm. with a few bars on it. And I'm like, well, there's me to start, mm -hmm. you know. So I went up and bought it from him, $650. Right. Brought it home to... Uh, my my good friend Alan Buddy is the guy that's usually mm -hmm. with me. Alan Water. Your buddy built. Yeah, buddy built. Yeah. Now at this time we'll stop. How many days are we before race season? It's uh, getting close. Yeah, two <laughs> two less, months. Two months. Less yeah. than two months. Well, so. it's actually about two months and two weeks. And you so got like, a, right. you got a chassis with a halo in. I got a chassis with a halo <laughs> okay. and a couple down bars. All right, we'll get, <laughs> all right, well, carry yeah. on. So uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm I'm up at uh, uh, Osborne shop. I'm taking pictures. I'm sending it to Buddy. I'm like, can we do this? Mm -hmm. He's like, get it, you know. So I load it on my trailer. I take it straight to his shop, which is in Brazito, which is about 20 minutes from my house. And uh, he's got a jig, you know, that mm -hmm. he's kept over the years. And he's built me a couple cars back in the day. And uh, anyway, so I dump it off at his house. So not to load him down too hard. We got a frame to build and a motor depression, mm -hmm. you know. So he uh, and life and work. <laughs> yeah, and life and work. <laughs> so. Uh, He's, he's on it, and he has a full-time job, just mm -hmm. like the rest of us, so he's doing it nights and weekends, you know, and I didn't want to take him away from his family, but, he, you know, he was kind of my uh, Harry Hogg, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of life right. happens, you know. Sure. So he took, everybody took a couple years off, so anyway, he's kind of getting excited to do, do it again, and uh, he finished her up, and I had some ideas, he had some ideas, you know, so we built our own car. Now's the time. Yeah, a couple of things I wanted to change to suit me and a couple of things he threw in there. So anyway, we got this car built and uh, Lonnie Wyman that uh, runs him and his boy and Gary Blackburn and a whole bunch that run up there at Callaway. Well, Lonnie's got a uh, parts. He does the parts and the fuel parts and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I bought a few parts and stuff from him and I'm like, man, I need to get this thing painted. Couldn't afford powder coat. You know, right. wanted to, but just mm -hmm. couldn't do it. So uh, he's like, well. You bring it up here, I'll paint it for 150 bucks. I'm like, right. done. <laughs> you know, so anybody, versus, anybody that's ever painted round tubes, yeah, you can do it. Oh, it's horrible. You it's might miserable. As well, you might as well it's dip miserable. It. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Especially if you have OCD a little bit, it'll yeah. be a three week deal. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he uh, and that saves you, you know, powder coats for mm -hmm. 450. Yeah. So you you saved quite a chunk right there. Yeah, he done me one better. He said, I'll tell you what. He said you put Wyman Enterprises on there. So I'll do it for free. I'm like, Absolutely. Done. You know, so. I had no problem with that, and I, you know, I buy tires and, you know, a lot of bolt-on stuff from him, and he treats me right on everything, and, you know, he's a little bit ways to drive, but, you know. He's gotta a, use your buddy. Yeah, he's a good dude. So, anyway, we've got it painted. Take the, as soon as I get it painted, it's my house. Interior, body, mm -hmm. rear end, spring, shock, steering box, you know. Right. That's my part. So, now that I've got that at my shop, the motor's at Buddy's again. He's freshening in the motor, so I got him going, yeah, Two months exactly, that car was completely there, done. Some yeah. there I remember running. watching you on Facebook. Yeah. Was just yeah. Bam, bam. Well, meanwhile, yeah, he's, he's giving he's me a hard here. time. He's yeah. on here 18 months on my new car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
But, yeah, I appreciate uh, that, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> well, but here's the deal. I, got, I work for myself now, so my shop's right there at my house. Right. So I just pretty much made my mind up. Two o'clock in the morning was my cutoff. You know, because mm -hmm. I'm like, I still got to work a full day tomorrow, uh -huh. you know. So I'm like, okay, two o'clock, no matter how much energy you got or, mm -hmm. you know. No matter, you're done. Yeah, or until you start seeing cross-eyed, get your ass in the house. Yeah, so yeah, two o'clock was my <laughs> limit. So, yeah, there was you know, 12, 14 hour deals on yeah. that. But, so you had yeah, a pretty yeah. uh, pretty good combination of used parts from the, from the deal you'd struck on the late model mm -hmm. along with new. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what were a few items that, that you would not put on used you know what I mean did you do uh, a shock package did you spend money on a shock package new springs all the way yeah. around or did you uh, do you believe in you know re Re reuse and reclaiming springs yeah I mean I like all the hard parts you know like spindles you know those are easy enough to check sure. you know so use spindles of course but use rotors actually but I redid the bearings on the you know the spindles uh, didn't put any used steering parts on it New steering box, new tie rods, new hyper, new everything. Yeah. yeah, edge to edge is new. And that's about four hundred bucks. Yeah, probably didn't want to, you know, scrimp on that. Uh, figured I'm rebuilding this motor, might as well give it something fresh to breathe out of. So mm -hmm. we put a new radiator in it, new carburetor. Yeah, uh, I tell you what, new, uh, money in a carburetor that that hurts. Yeah, but you talk about ending issues. Yeah. That, yeah. that can just solve or, or produce, but yeah. if you'll spend the money on a good carburetor, that's one of my first things. You know, anybody's old pickup that yeah. runs terrible, yeah. put a carburetor on it, suddenly you got a stock car. Yeah. You know, yeah. that, that's just an, that's money well spent always. Yeah, I don't want to have the hood off the racetrack. I yeah. want to be there and race Driving. that thing. Making it fast, yeah. not yeah. just making it go. But now we did put, well, Lonnie actually, Wyman had to use Coleman rear end, so I bought that from him and you had to jig it. Right. Uh, new shocks, new springs. Uh, we built, actually built our own trailing arms, you know, those speedway, at the, uh, along the too. length and the bushings are right, mm -hmm. so we just decided, well, we'll save that money and just yeah. build our own. So we built the trailing arms and uh, best, the rest of it, you know, we just did ourselves, built all the interior. Got well, that right there, the man hours is involved in a cockpit, yeah. the interior is yeah. killer. Yeah, right. You know, and then, you know, hell, I even bought a used, you know, gauge panel. Mm -hmm. Offerman's been making those nice. Yep. Panels, but I, said, I actually bought some used gauges, but you know, I try to stick, put the money where it needs mm -hmm. to go. And sure, you know, yeah. well, the good thing about the gauges, you know, we're most for the most part everybody uses mechanical stuff. Yeah, if it works, it works. Yeah, you and know? if you run a good set of gauges, yeah, they'll last a long time. Yeah, yeah. So that's the so got her together and actually practice went great, you know, which was a relief. You know, you guys, no. yeah, no. I mean, you guys have, you know, your stuff and you guys can bang ideas off each other. This was a one off. Now, you did know? you go to the weight jack and the external yeah. shots? Yeah, we one? did go with weight jacks. And, and my main thing was, I mean, I know a lot of you guys run, got used to running, you know, you guys would just change springs around a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd run a lot back in the day on weight jacks. And to me, it was just easier to scale it. Yeah. You know, I don't really do much adjusting on the race, at the racetrack, but as far as ride heights and stuff at the mm -hmm. shop, you know, I just... I thought it was easier. I thought, you know, for this for the shock cost, I would rather went with the high man front other. You know, there's more used stuff laying around. For yeah, that too. yeah. So that's why we went that route. But I mean, we spent like a, I got five grand out of the S10. Yeah, right. it, it was gone. It was gone. gone. Yeah, it was sure. gone. On yeah. top of the parts that. Well, and on top of a truck and on yeah. top of a trailer and yeah, a sure. shop and you know it, it's it can't be done overnight yeah. you know but i will say this i mean that car was built from nothing to not turn key but a full roller minus the power plant for five grand right yeah. that's and that's, that's very good yeah. that's, that's very, very good. doable you know uh probably that same vehicle if you just call up the latest and the greatest mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's going to be anywhere from fifteen to twenty thousand yeah, dollars. So right. um, there, you've saved. You know, just by being a little bit resourceful mm -hmm. and not afraid uh, to work on it yourself. Not afraid to work mm -hmm. on it yourself. Um, and it looks great. I mean, it looks really good. Uh, yeah. Your cars always well, have a, your cars always have a beach look about them. Yeah, they you know, do, but, yeah. but, but <laughs> yeah. they, they always look the same. This one looks really good. This is a good looking car. And obviously, your year started off really, really well. You got picked up second place yeah. last week. Last. I had a better we've done this year. Yeah. So, well, well that's just so, uh, I guess you'd say rewarding about it, you know, to be able to take it. I mean, I got a, a hats off to my buddy, Alan Wider. I mean, you know, I've been racing 20 years now, and I, he's probably been with me 15 of it. 
and built my motors and been there. I mean, he's mm -hmm. the guy. As well, he's mm -hmm. like Josh is your yep. go-to guy, you know. And I got Jesse Carter. I, I you know, he's gonna be watching this too. I mean, he's been there mm -hmm. for the last two years. And but now, buddy, I mean, I'm telling you what, when you when you got a guy at your you know, say, hey, buddy, man, I tore this car up. Can we get it ready for next week? Yep, bring it out here and we'll do it. And that's an important part of just being able to do what, well, you, have your mind what you do yeah. and what you've done yeah. this year. So Yeah, it's confident. I mean, it's a huge confidence builder when you know, you know, you pull into the pit and you have an issue, you're not the only one, yep. you know, you got Dealing with ideas it. to bang off somebody yeah. else. So that's right. a huge bonus. Going back to this weekend, uh, Probably is that a would that be a is that a career best run at Lucas? Yep, career there? Best, for and sure. not only was it a second, but it's a second in between the two hottest cars. Yeah, on a very slick night. On a very slick night. And you know, you're on you're one of the few left on a skinny tire we're getting. Yeah, I'm like eight forty man. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, here at Lucas Oil Speedway we have the option of running the A forty. Mm -hmm. Uh You've tried the 10 inch asphalt tire. Well, uh, some of my good ones. Yeah. Didn't like what do you think? Them. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I had some old ones that I tried at Lucas that I hated, and that's when mm -hmm. I come borrowed yours. Well, yours woke it up, uh -huh. you know, because yours was a lot better shape. I think <laughs> I borrowed them others from Joe Miller. <laughs> well, and, I, and ours are pretty bad yeah. compared yeah. to yeah. some of the yeah. others. They make no, the they, stuff you put on them? I think, they, <laughs> I think Junior Johnson ran them ones I borrowed from Joe. Yeah. I mean, so much is rolled, but it was harder than woodpecker lips. But. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I, I I just I've run a a forties on you know run modifieds a couple of years and that's all we ever had mm -hmm. you know because that's more of a oh UMP, UMP up that area yeah. so it's not the G sixty which is you know I think them are hockey pucks but I never really had to run them mm -hmm. Derek Henson's been running pretty good with them but you guys get to run the, the takeoffs and you know the a forties are legal so I yeah. just I just kind of sure, lean towards them to and I know yeah I know what they'll do with the car so I just that's what I'm gonna run, but yeah, that was uh, to get second Saturday. Yeah, I mean, that had to feel. I had to feel. Pretty oh, good. you don't know what I'd have done if I'd have got second. I'd have been <laughs> yeah, <that>. yeah. <laughs> well, that's kind of been the deal for the, the Lucas thing, you know. I mean, we ran real well up, mm -hmm. up from where I'm from. You know, we ran good at Callaway. We ran good when Whole Summit was open. We ran good when the lake was open. You know, we. I always felt when I went to the races, we had a chance to win. You know, I come down here, you know, and I know. Heavy hitting, good mm -hmm. motors, good stuff, good equipment, you know, good drivers. So I'm like, okay, let's see how I stack up. You know, I thought, well, I, I know I can drive with you guys. I just ain't got the equipment, mm -hmm. you know, so. And it's a unique, there's a unique the track is, setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the, the track dirt, is different. The dirt sod, you know, so much about that place is one of a kind. Yeah. You know, I always used to, I always used to get frustrated and uh, used to yeah you know <laughs> used yeah. To. I, I used to get frustrated till uh what was it the the show me 100 interview with bloomquist or whatever he's like this is the damnedest place we've ever run it. he's <laughs> yeah, like you'd be exactly good one right. minute and terrible the next i'm like yeah. okay well i don't feel quite so bad now yeah. so uh plans for the rest of the year um we went uh i kind of had a head of steam saturday after you know that good run you know and like you said between two of the Guys, been the guys you know, yeah. so I'm like, Tim well, that, I didn't have the homemade car, you know, so mm -hmm. uh, that kind of, actually, I, Jesse was, at, we were at the track Saturday night, and I just, yeah, I got, I drew bad, you know, drew 93, and I'm like, in the back of this heat, and I'm like, you have to get up on the wheel this time, uh -huh. and I ain't finished the last in this heat race, you know, so we got up on the wheel and rode her up the third and got some passing points. Ain't and, it amazing how much mindset really is? Yeah, part it's of a lot, it. yeah, you go in there with no sleep and had a bad night, yeah. you're not going to run good, so. I had a kind of head of steam going in Sunday, and I thought, man, I'll just go up to double X and see how we can do yeah. this thing, you know, and ended up pulling out a second last night, but I had a heck of a run. Yeah. We had a good night, but uh, it just, yeah, it's a, definitely a boost to your boost. confidence. Well, I tell you what, you, you've done a lot with it, with not as much as a lot of people, so you should be very proud of that. Yeah, uh, you know, you've got more championships than about anybody I know hanging on, so yeah. you should never, ever let you hold yourself short because... You've sure done awful well. Everybody knows you're there. You got a great fa fan following. Yeah. You've always got good help in the, pr in the pit, so that tells you you're doing something right. So. Yeah. But you ought to, you ought to be satisfied with how things are going. Yeah. I was, uh, you know, families. You know, I was there of mm -hmm. course, and my family's backed me. They go to every race I've raced for about you know 20 years. But uh, to be able to go in my shop and check them trophies out in 20 or 30 mm -hmm. years, you know. Yeah. I might not be racing a whole lot longer, but 
you know, I'd like for people to at least know, man, that beach was a, yeah, he know, did good. It is, he yeah. did pretty good, you know, and he was a good, you know, I, I never roughed nobody up mm -hmm. to pass him, and, you know, I, I, I didn't want to tear nobody up because I know it comes back, yeah. you right, know. Right. So. Well, on that note, I think we better take a break, I guess, for a minute, and make sure everything's going like, going planned. We got to check the chickens things. again. Check, check the chickens. Chickens and the dog. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Thanks. All right, we're back. Uh, thanks again for watching Hitting the Chip. We've uh, we've let ourselves run a little bit long tonight, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna finish up here. I'm gonna let Steve uh, go through his list of sponsors and thanks. And uh, from us to you, thank you for making yeah, the trip and, and being a good guest tonight. And uh, good we time. wish you the best of luck for the rest of this year. Hopefully, uh, some of it rubs off on us. <laughs> yeah, hopefully some of it rubs off <laughs> on us. So anyway, uh, I know you got a list of sponsors there, so Tell we'll see who about. helps. Helps yeah. make this happen. Well, I've got uh, quite a few on here, and lot, some of them are money, and some of them are just help. But it all, all, yeah, it all works. I'll take, I'll take all of it. It's I all big picture. Yeah. Uh, Matt Weeberry that has Envision Signs and Wraps has been doing my cars for probably the last four or five years now, and you know I just tell him what I want, mm -hmm. or actually he kind of designs it. And he, he knows I kind of got the Kenny Carroll colors. Mm -hmm. I got my blue and white. Got to have that on there, mm -hmm. so. He wraps it and makes it look awesome, and he don't charge me a dime. And uh, you know, I need something quick. You know, he does his best, and he's busy and he, as busy as they come. So right. I can't help him. You know, ask for a better deal than that. My aunt Nancy, my mom's sister, she sent me a check a couple weeks ago, just out of the blue. So I got her name on there because <laughs> I'll take you know. And then that's family wants to do. help out, and I'll do it. You know. And then Alan Water, that's my buddy, built chassis, and he also does my motor. And true guy, and just all around, you know, one of my best friends. So, uh, got him on there. My aunt Roslyn, <laughs> my dad's sister, they've been watching me race since I was just got started. So, uh, she lives in O'Fallon. They came down to Lucas for the first time, yeah. or this year, and just loves the place. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Lonnie Wyman, Wyman Enterprises, parts, and painted my chassis, and, uh, you know, just all around good guy, kind of a tech, you know, techie guy if I need to run across, run some things at him. And, uh, Jason Ray with lawn, uh, Jason Ray's Lawn and Landscape, uh, gave me a pretty good chunk this year. Upton's Custom Collision, Jamie Upton and his wife have a body shop up there in Eldon, and uh, Gary Miller, Nap Auto Parts mm -hmm. in um, Eldon. My sister Melody with Beat Salon, uh, she getting some shirts made. Does she does she take care of the? She could do that good. My brother-in-law Gene's got the same dream. Same, yeah. yeah. She could work he that. He picked right. that out of his butt. Yeah. And then I'm going to have to give old Hendrix a little plug here because uh, he set me up on them shots. <laughs> I, will, I will brag them up. I, I'll, I will buy another set next year. You know, we'll have these redone with the job that Paku does on them things. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. So, Well, guys, that's about all the time we have for this week. As always, if you want to get with us, uh, look us up on Hitting the Chip on uh, our Facebook page or Big Planet Media, Sean Covers, your contact there. Uh, we have a good time with this. If there's anybody out there that wants to become involved with us on this, you know, we're, we're looking for a sponsor just like we are with our car. So look us up, hit us up, share our page, and uh, we appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks.